Okay, Boker Tov, today's daf is daf Zion in Yavamas. We learn for four Shlema for Shlomo ben Rachel, Yosef Azriel ben Chaim Michal, and Elazar ben Ruma. Yesterday we got about halfway down on the page, and we're still looking for a reason for why we need the the Xer Shav of to teach me that, <clears throat> that you don't uh, perform Yibam on the 15 uh, ervos. Uh, isn't it obvious anyway? Essay the Yibam Shnafi Doch Losa Say Shish Bokores of uh, Asia, of, um, <coughs> of Achos Isha and all the other ones. So the Gemara says, El Itzrich, about halfway down. El Itzrich, I might think, Tapi Asha Sachta, Vashia Bachlal, Vyotzma Kla Laman, Lalaman Al Atsa Yotzel, Lama Kla Ku Yotzel. We have 13, <coughs> we stay every day, Vishmo Lomer, Vishlosh is very Midos, a Tartan addresses. There are 13 principles in which we darshan. And we're going to deal now with number eight and number 11. Number eight says that something was in a some, some uh, detail that was in a general principle, and then it left the principle. In other words, it was included in the principle. Why did it have to say a special uh, detail of this, particular, uh, uh, of this particular item? Why? Not just to teach me on itself, but to teach me on everything in the general principle. Why? So I would think Eishasach was included in, all the, in the, all the general principles of all the Arayas. What's an, what's an example of that? Davashay Bechlal, Biyasim and Aklal. Uh, the Pasik says that you cannot eat, you cannot eat kachim while you're in a state of tum. If that's a, if you do that, you're gonna get karis. So it's but then it says another Pasik says, this is in the in Khafes and in Vayikusan, it says, one particular kind of carbon shlamim. If you eat the shlom with the muscle of why you're tummy, and you're going to get karas. Why did it have to tummy it again this way? Shlom and bechlal kala kachim ayu. Shlom was already included in all the other kachim. Why did it have to tell you this particular rule by shlom? We already know it, and the shlom is included in the general principle of the kachim. Why did it? Why did it go out to tell you a hekish to teach you a comparison? Only things. Kachim, which are brought as korbanos on mizbech, meaning that they're damas sprinkled on mizbech, the milrum are burnt on the mizbech. If it's a case of an ola, it's the meat itself is burnt on mizbech. Yatsu kachim ras, excluding kachim bedekabayis, the kachim that are just given for maintenance, bedekabayis, meaning they are not, they don't even have to be kosher anim, animals that are kosher, they don't have to be kosher animals, period. You can give a chamor also. Let's say the base meat she needs chamor and horses to do uh, work, whatever. That's kachay, that's kachay bedeka bias. Uh, you could even give a, a, an animal, it's kosher bezbech, you can give that also. If you give it specifically for bedeka bias, those things are not called kosher bezbech, and you're not chayef chorus if you eat those in the state of tumma. So you have to bias. So therefore, in other words, it's teaching me why, did, why was shlom enumerated in detail separately from the general principle to teach me a new aloha, just like shlomim or daf kachem bezbech. All the other things in the general principle are also, also only kachim is bech. If you would have just said kachim, you might think it includes all kachim, kachim is bech and kachim is So then it, it lists shlomim itself, a special posse, and then to teach me that where does the issue of eating kachim in a state of tumma apply? Of course, only kachim is bech, like shlomim, not kachim is Hachanami, so here I would say also when it comes to ibam, having in, I would say, you can't marry your brother's wife. That's all that's all the other rights. You can't marry your sister. You can't marry your mother. You can't marry uh, uh, your, your mother-in-law. All the surim that were listed there that you can't marry, one of them is your brother's wife. So just you can't marry your aunt. Uh, so just like you say that Eishasach uh, was included in all the other ones, Lama Yatsisa, why did it go out to tell me over here, Yibam has a special Allah when it comes to your brother's wife? Just like Eishach's mother, Afkolar is not Mishar. When it comes to marrying your your deceased brother who died with no children, marrying his wife, all the other ayas were also being mutter. So that's why I would think that it's mutter. Kamash won the pasuk of Olei Olei. The Gzei Roshav to teach me that it's also. So the Gemara says, what kind of a comparison is that? That's not a regular case of Dovah Sheva Chlal. Midami, how can you compare this to the case that we just mentioned with Mizbeach? Midami, Hosam Chlal Biyisu Prat Biyisu. There, the klal is a general principle. You can't eat kashim in a state of tumma, and the prat is the same idea. You can't eat kashim in a state of tumma. Why did I tell you shlom to tell me? Oh, only things which are kashim is bech, not kashim bedek abayas. 
But over here, the general principle that you can't marry all the Arias, all the forbidden family relatives that are considered incestuous, like your mother, like your mother-in-law, like your aunt, like your daughter-in-law, like your uh, including your brother, your sister-in-law, your brother's wife. That's the cloud was that's the general principle. And the prod is the heter. The prod is the heter, meaning that's a new thing. That's not like the, 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 the number, no, I said with of the Yigum Amidas, we started with number eight. Meaning it was already included in the principle. And now it tells you another detail of that principle. Why did it have to say it separately to teach me? Not only on that particular item is this detail applied, but to all the general principle. So we say, oh, why did it say shlomim, you can't eat in the state of Tumah? Tell me that when the Pasuk talked about before, all kachim you can't eat in the state of Tumah, it doesn't mean kachim v'etik v'ayis, only things like shlomim, kachim mizbeach. So you want to say the same thing over here by Arias. Oh, listen, why would I think that you're allowed to marry your wife's sister and all the other Arias from Kems of Eba? Because Eishasach was included in all the other principles, all the other Arias, all the other uh, uh, forbidden marriages, for the, uh, all the other forbidden women, you, it was included there. Why did it tell you this particular one? Eishasach is mutter in the case of Yibam. Uh, so maybe all the other ones would also be mutter in the case of Yibam. But over here, the prod is a heter. It's not an extension of the Yisr. In other words, before you could say it's an extension of the Yisr. We had the same Yisr of Eidun Kachim. And why did it tell you you can't eat Shlomim again? To tell you only things like Shlom, not other things. But over here, the general principle is Yisr. All the Arais are Asr. The, the prod of Yibam is a heter. This is not comparable to number eight of the 13 principles of uh, Rabbi Shmuel Loma that we say every morning, Rabbi Shmuel Loma, right? Not, not number eight, but it's number 11, which is what? This is comparable to Elodav It was included in the general principle of It's teaching me a new thing. It's not teaching me, it's not repeating the general principle in a detailed form, but it's telling you a new thing. These things were all Osir, and this one's Mutter. Or telling, or telling you a new detail, even if it's also a mutter, but it's a new detail. Teach me a new thing. You can't return it to its original principle. That's number principle number eleven of every shmaloma that we say every more. It's principle number eleven that if something was in a general principle and it came out of that principle to teach you a new halacha. See, in the case of of shlamim, it wasn't a new halacha. The kachim already knew you can't eat in the state of tum. Then it's a shlam you can't eat in the state of tum. Not teaching you a new thing. So what is it teaching you? <laughs> it's teaching you only things like shlamim. It's teaching you back to the general principle. Only things like shlamim, things which are kachim is bech, not kachim, not kachim, But over here, it's teaching you a new thing. It's telling you that all the arias are also, you can't marry your sister-in-law, you can't marry your mother-in-law, you can't marry your aunt, you can't marry your daughter-in-law, you can't marry all these people. And then as it comes to yibam, it's mutter. That prat is a heter. That's a new thing. And teaching you a new thing, then it's a different rule. That if, if you have things that are in general principle, and then it took it out of its general principle to teach you a new thing, then it, then it's out of the principle. It doesn't go into the general category anymore until the pasuk puts you back there. Befeirish. What's the what's the what's the classic example at the Tanya? You're not allowed to put it back. You can't put it back into the general principle. Until the pasuk puts it back. Befeirish tells you back. What's the example? Kaisa. We know that there's five kinds of ashamas, either five or maybe six if you count uh, asham tali, but, but there's five there's five kinds of ashamas. One of them is asham tzorah. So asham tzorah, what is an asham? Asham is usually, it's a male uh, ram that you bring, a two-year-old male ram in general. It's, sometimes it's, it's not a two-year-old, but general. And you shecht it, and where it's kache, it's it's um, it's kache, kache kachim, and therefore you shecht it in the north. And then the, when the Pasuk talks about the one of Mitzorah, it tells you more detail. It says, You shecht the Here it's a keves because it's not a two-year-old. I'm by Mitzorah, but it's, it's, it's always a male. It's always a male animal, uh, um, either, a, either a lamb or a ram, an older one, male, a male. It says, You shecht the Rishach the Chathas, Vesa Ola, which means in the north, the Makama Kodesh, in the holy place in the Azara. Kikachatas Ashimula coin. It's like a chatos and an ashim. It already it is an ashim, right? So what does it mean kechatos ashim? Shein tamalam kechatos ashim. What does it teach me? Chatos uh, ashim. Uh, if we know it's an ashim, the ashim is there. Rashi says in the shkit itself, and it says v'shacharas akevus makom asher yishcharas chatos chatos. And if it's what for t- treat it like the regular kind of a ashim, 
that it, think it requires Shaim Shein Arba, the four Zrikas, the, twa, the two which becomes four Zrikas on this Be'ach, uh, we already know that too. Mat and Dom Achila, so eat it, eat it, let it, only a coin could eat it, and it's only eaten in the Azara. It's like other Rosh Hashanahs. Why does it say Ki Chachatas Hashem? Well, those words seem to be extra. Shein Tamil Mechatz Hashem, Matam Mechatz Hashem. What does it teach me? The Fishi Atz Hashem at Zara, leaving the Bechadish. Hashem at Zara is different than other Rosh Hashanahs. Why? What are the other Rosh Hashanahs? The Sham Shiv Charufa, Sham Zeilos, the other things that you bring an Hashem for. It's called the guilt offering, but it's really it's like it's similar to a Chatas. Except the chatas is brought, uh, some chatas is a kid for a seer, a female. This is a male. And it's different myth, for different averis. You bring the different tarbonas. So the fishy outside of Shem Sodom is teaching you a new thing. Ashimasar is different than all the other Shemas. Why? But boy and yada, boy and regal. The man who needs his tahara, the mitzora, he has to stand in, was, we'll see the shara nikner, which is like at the at the gateway between the Ezra Snashim, which is not part of the Azara. doesn't have the same fish as It's like our bias. And and, and the Azar, and he puts his hands in there and the coin puts the dam on his hands and on his feet, etc. on the on his uh, on his uh, thumb and on his uh, big toe. Fishy the boy and Yadaboy and Regal Yamanis on his right, on his right thumb and his right toe. I might think, listen, this left its principle. This is not a regular Mitzorah. We know the I mean, regular Asham. We know the regular, we know the rules of Asham. But now he tells you by uh, Asham Mitzorah, it says Shechted in the north, and it says Kikhat Asham. Why is it Kikhat Asham? Because the Torah is specifically putting it back into the category of an Asham also. You might think that since it left, since it's Dabra Chadash, it has something that no other Asham has. It has Mat and Dam on the Yad and the Bo, the Bo and Yad and the Bo and Regel. So I might think Layatam, maybe it doesn't need Mat and Dam, Mat and Dam and Bey Mulam is back. Maybe it's different. Maybe, okay, yes, you Shechted in the north there, it says, Shechted as a Chat, Makamashe, Shechted as a Chat, as Ola. Fine. But maybe since it's got a new thing here, it's a different kind of a carbon. It requires boy and yad and boy and regal. So maybe it doesn't require damim on the mizbeach and, and a murim on the mizbeach. Maybe it doesn't require the yachalo yeton, matan damim, be murim, legam mizbeach. Maybe it doesn't need those things because it's davar charish. Tamaloma, the Pasuk puts it back. Tamaloma, kitchatas ashim hu. It's still like a chatas ashim. Machatas ashim, tim matan damim, on the mizbeach. Just like chatas ashim ni. Sprinkling of the dam and burning the murim on the mizbeach, the fats on the mizbeach. Afashim tam not dam me murim legav mizbeach. In other words, what is this pasuk? This pasuk is a classic case of davar davar shayr b'chalal the yotza min a klal, right? Not stam yotza min a but yotza lidon the davar achadosh teaches you a new thing. This is not a regular asham. It's got new things to it. So I might think, right, that it's a, it's got new things. It's only the things that are mentioned over here uh, after the mizbeach. Right, the lower hydre pasuk goes. The Gemara goes on. The lower hydre craft. The pasuk did not put it back into the general category and said ki kachatas ashemu. Even though we made new do rules here, it's still a chatas and ashem. If the pasuk did not put it back and said have a middle, am I did not pick up? Am I not left love? What the Torah specified over here, the Torah detailed and said, okay, it took it out and said, listen, uh, it's got boy and yad and boy and regal and it has shkita but sapon, but maybe it doesn't have mat and dumbe murum gamas beach. So that's the idea over here. Hochanami, Havi Mina by Eshazach, the history, history, right? Eshazach, the history, history. Okay, you know what? What do you want to say? You want to say that Eshazach, um, we, 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 we started off today's more by saying maybe this is Dover Yatsum Leklal, Lerm Salakam Akhuisa. So just like Eshazach is Mutter, all the other things are also Mutter, all the other Arias are Mutter too, because Eshazach was one of the general Arias. All the other things are, are, are also. Oh, and since Eshesach went out by Yibam and said, when the guy dies with no children, uh, you, 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 you're, you relax the rule of Eshesach and you let him marry, and you let him marry his, um, his, uh, his sister in law. So the other things too. No, this is not Dabrashi Yatsim Raklal, it's teaching you a new thing because this is the other things are also all the RIs are also and this thing is mutter that's a new thing you can't put it back into the category unless the Pasuk puts it back specifically like in the case of the uh, of the Asham Mitzorah so here too so here I, would, I wouldn't say that it goes back the Pasuk was in the general category of all ervas, of all forbidden incestual marriages, and the Torah took it out of its category. Okay, what did it take it out of its category? It said, oh, but this particular kind of erva, if the man died with no children, it's mutter to marry his sister-in-law, then it's mutter, then you can marry your, 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 uh, your brother's sister, your brother's wife. 
Chanami have mina eshesach the history that's mutter history sharai is low. It took it out of its category. It didn't put it back in and say it's like the other things. It wasn't like that. It was a new thing. It said eshesach even though it's eshesach is normally forbidden if your brother has children. You cannot, there's no yibim. It's, it's, it's erva. It's just like marrying your mother or your daughter-in-law, right? You can't do those things, right? Except the Torah took it out of its category. If you die with no children, then you're allowed to. Okay, that's a special thing. But the Torah didn't put it back and say, okay, now it's in the general category. This heter in, is, is inclu, includes all the other ervas too, that if it's your wife's uh, sister, if your, if your brother's wife also happens to be your wife's sister, or, or, or your daughter-in-law or whatever, or any other is, sir. Uh, didn't, it didn't say that even was mutter there. So therefore, we're still in a state where we don't know, why do I need a lab to teach me that you can't marry your wife's sister if she's also your brother's wife? Your brother died and he was married to your sister. Remember the case of Reuben and Leah. Reuben died with no children. And you're married, and Shimon is married to Rachel, the sister of Leah. So. Uh, Pasuk says, Olela, you don't marry her. Why would I think you could? The other one's not. Why would I have a Havamina? Ella, Salkadaidech, I mean, I would think, Nilma, the Mama Tsinu. What's the guess? Salkadaidech, I mean, a Tese, a Chosisha, the Mama Tsinu, Meishasach. I'll learn it from Mama Tsinu, a simple analogy, right? A simple comparison. Mama Tsinu, Meishasach, Meishasach, Miyabma, just like your brother's wife. You may keep him, even though. You can't marry your brother's wife normally, right? Normally, it's forbidden to marry your, your brother's wife. Certainly while he's married to her, but even after he divorced her or he died with children, you can't marry her. So, why not? If you're, one is mutter, why shouldn't you say the other is mutter? In the case of even there's only one isr, Eishasach. The Torah says when it comes to Eishasach, it's mutter. Hacha, treisur, but over here there's two isr. In, the, in all the cases in the mission also, your brother's wife also happens to be your daughter-in-law. Your brother's wife happens to be your sister-in-law. Your brother's wife happens to be your mother-in-law, right? Whatever, whatever, right? Your, those cases. So uh, there, there's two isurim. If you just if you just want to get by simple analogy, how can you how can you compare? One is one is in, in one case we're talking about two isurim. One case is one. So maybe one isur. The Torah said if it's only eshasach, okay. When it comes to even Mary, but if there's two isurim, there's an isur of achosisha and eshasach at the same time. Why? Because your brother's wife is also your sister's, your, your wife's sister. Your brother's wife is also your wife. Maybe you can't. Uh, 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 so the Gemara says, no, even so, I would say it's okay. Now the same, I would think, hold the history, history. We have a concept of if something is also, if it's if something is also, even if there's two Isurim, since the first one is Mutter, we relax the second one too. What does that mean? I'm going to give it a little preamble so it'll come out better later on. If there's two isurim on something, right? You have one isur and then you have another isur, right? So the first, second one is built on the first one. If the first one falls away, the second one falls away too, right? We could say that, right? The first one falls away, the second one falls away. But so, so maybe I would say that. So enochanami, you have an isur of eshasach, and it's also achosisha, right? Your brother's wife, your brother died, is also your wife's. So you would say, okay, if one isur goes away, the other one falls away too. Hold the history issue. Where do we see this concept? Not tamer that mean hold the history issue. Where do we get this idea that we say hold the history issue? Since one since one answer falls away, the other one also. The Tanya in a totally different aspect. We're going to talk about this now. The Tanya Mitzora. A Mitzora, after he's been purified, right? Meaning after his Mitzora, after his Saras disappears, that means he's been he's been you know he's been put away, locked you know put outside of the community, and later on it disappears. He has to go through a state of tar for seven days. After that, the time of Mitzor, Pesach. Now, on the eighth day, he brings Karbonos, right? And that allows him to eat Kachim, right? right? He goes to the mikvah on the, on the seventh day, goes through purification, and on the eighth day, he brings his Karbonos. So, Let's say the eighth day was Erev Pesach. Erev Pesach, you know, is the day that you bring your Karbon Pesach. And it's one of the two Isur, it's one of the two mitzvahs that if you don't do it, you're Chayev Karas. That and Nilo, the two mitzvahs I say, the other 36 are Los Asseis. This, these, that it's a chayv kar, so it's an important mitzvah. So mitzvah shachal shmini shel ber pesel. So what happened? He finished everything. He went through the leprosy process. He was sent out of the community, the kohen. Now he's purified. Now he wakes up on the eighth day. Oh, I'm going to bring my kabbonis today, and then I can eat. I can bring the carbon pesach and eat it like everybody else. Right? He's all excited. Then v'ra carry barion. He had a seminal omission 
on that day. Now, if you go, he has, is it a mission like that? If he is, Rashi explains, if he is Tomei Mace, he'd been at a funeral, or he was a sheretz, he came in contact with the sheretz, he's still allowed to go <coughs> on Harabayas. He's allowed to go on Harabayas. Now, what does he have to do, the Mitzvah? On the eighth day, he has to bring his Kravonis and put his hands in and get the bow and yad and bow and right. right? He stands in the Sharm and does that. He has to do all that. However, there's a problem. Because now that he's a Balkari, a Balkari is not allowed to go on Harabayas. Now, I'm not talking about the Azara. Remember, there's three, there's three machnos. There's the machne kuna, which is the Azara. There's the machne levia, which is Harabayas. And then there's the machne isro, which is all of Yerushalayim, right? Those are the three machnos, right? So um, uh, a, a, um, a Tomei mace or a Matarmit. So it's allowed to go on Harabayas because it learned out from Moshe. Moshe took the Atzimus Yosef Imo. Moshe was in the was in the Machna Levia, and he took that some of the dead bones with him. So you can see that a person who's Tommy Mace can go in the Machna Levia. But a Valkyrie, not. Valkyrie is not a consist by Yishlachu, by Yishlachu, they sent him out of the Machna. They heard someone Zav and says, Call Zav, teaching me a carry also, Rashi explains. So for all carry, I mean, he saw a carry, the Tovel went to the mikvah, but what could he do now? He has to wait for Herb Shemesh, really, before he can go on Harabias. So how does he purify himself? On the one hand, he has an obligation to bring in carbon Pesach. On the other hand, he can't he can't purify himself because he can't go on hara bias to the Shire Nikta to put his hands in there. What are you gonna do? So the Tavl Amr Kham, this is what the Kham said. Afal Pishain Tful Yom Akhar Nichnas, even though another Tful Yom, who doesn't have a carbon pestle to bring today, right? Nichnas, somebody else, Aval Fish ain't full, Akhar Nichnas, even though he can't go on hara bias if he's a Valkari, Zen Nichnas, he should go in. He should go in and purify himself. How is he allowed to do that if you're not supposed to? Mutav shiavo eses sheish bal karis. The 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 mitzvah of carbon pesach, which is an asay, which is karis, if you don't bring it, that should come viyitchen override eses shein bal karis. What's the eses shein bal karis? By shalchum and amachna, he's got to leave the machna levia. Right, he's got to go. He's not allowed to be on har bias. Okay, that's an essay shein bal karis. And here we were talking about eses dachalosa. Say right, an essay sheish bal karis should be docha the losa. So what does he do? He goes on har bias. He gets himself purified. He really can't go into the Azara uh, t- because he's still until Harav Shemesh, until the evening. And the carbon Pesach has to be brought when? The, on, in, the, in the morning of Yadalit, right? But that he'll mail in. He sends that in. He's allowed, right? The key is he'll be able to eat the carbon Pesach at night after Harav Shemesh. So that's what he should do again. Mutab, Shiaba Esh Bakars, Vietcha Bakars. Okay. Bam Rabbi Yochman. Okay, that's what he says. That's his. Bam Rabbi Yochman says even more than that. This is really not even a say here, also. There's not even a say. Shinemar, before the new courtyard. My what does it mean the new courtyard? They made a new courtyard. Omar Rebbe, the gear says, they made a new halacha. The rabbis instituted a new decree. It's not even a doraisa that it's full yom cannot go into the machlavia, which is harabayas, which is where the Shar Nikner is. On Harabayas at the gateway between the Ezra Snachim, which is Harabayas, and the Azara, which is which is Machne Kahuna, right? Lo Yachim is Machne. It's it's only it's only a, a drabana, so it's not even an Isra Raisa. So it's not even that. You don't have to say Essay Sheish Bokaris Docha Essay Sheein Bokaris. It's not even a Doraisa. It was the thing that they were Machadish. What did they do? They expanded. They expanded the Machne Levia over there, and they said that also is Machne Levia, and you can't go there until Yom Lukanis the Machne Levia. Okay. So what does all this have to do with us? But Amr Ula and Ula said, Matam, ho, what's the reason why it's mutter? Now, without Rashi, you couldn't learn this Gemara. It's like missing a piece of the Gemara. We're going to look at the Rashi, right where the lines get wide. Ula says a new thing too. When you put your hands into the, when the Mitzorah is not allowed to go into, he's not allowed to go into the, Azara, right? That's Machna. He's still Tomei on his eighth day till he gets purification. But he goes in and he puts his hands in, so to speak, in there, right? So that you're allowed to do. It's only coming in partially. Ula says, no, Bia B'mixus, even putting your hands in is considered Bia. So how does he allow to do that? Omer Ula, Rashi says, Omer Ula, Bia B'mixus, Shema Bia, Be'isvene Mehon, Me'asim Bizdik, Tani, Zen Nichnas, Umachnas, Yadol Bahonos, he puts his hands in there. Yama, Bia B'mixus, Shema Bia, how could he come in there? Nina, Midin Nichnas, Lahar Bias, Mishum De'esish, He's allowed to go into Harabayas. 
right? It's Esther Shein Barkaris. But for the Baruch, how could he put his hands on there? Edi Vidi Esther Shein Barkaris. There's an Esther Shein Barkaris of what? Of Pesach. And there's an Esther Shein Barkaris of you can't be in the Machna, in the Azara, in the Machna Kuna. That's also but the Kaima Machas, Machusik Kippur, if he didn't yet have his full Kapara, he didn't bring his Kapanas on the eighth day, she went into the Azara, make sure means the Azara, Onish Karas. They ain't Sarah Lomit full yom, and certainly at full yom, who didn't even, Machusik Kippur is already on his eighth day just as he brings Kapanas. At full yom, isn't even finished with his seventh day. He hasn't had yet, he's still full yom, he's waiting for Evshemesh, for Sharkal to mayim. So that was the cash they asked on Ula. You see, you know, the Gemara doesn't say this, but it, it, you have to see this Rashi, otherwise the Gemara doesn't make sense. And but um, Shani Ula, and Ula, he replied, I'll tell you why. Shani Mitzorah, Paul Bohutulo, via Bemixus Lasra. So since the Torah said specifically he's allowed to put his hands into the Azara, the Torah allowed him to do that. The Torah was not to mix us, so via Bemixus Lasra. So even though via Bemixus is Shma Bia, and technically Bichayev Chorus, if he, if he stepped in there, Bichayev Chorus, but the Torah said he's allowed to. And he's chayev kares on the eighth day. So he became a, a balkari on the eighth day. Remember, he woke up on the eighth day. He's about to go in there and get his mechuska. He's still mechuska when he can't go to the azara. And and ula holds bia, but makes us putting your hands in is shma bia, meaning let's say he wouldn't be in mitzora. And he's just tummy, and he put his hands in there. He's high of chorus because he put his hands in there. But the Torah says, for a mitzvah, he's allowed to be a bzuba mixus. Therefore, it's mutter also for the carry. Alma, so you see, all the ishbi chadisur ishbi nami idach to having a bay. Since the first isser fell away, the isser of putting his hands in, why did that fall away? Because the Torah, the Torah sanctioned. The Torah said, if you're a mitzvah, you got to put your hands in there on the eighth day and get the matan bahonos. Uh, no, 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 it's not, it's not a call. Yeah, you can call, but he, but he says, hold the us. Right, the ultimate cloud, if you use that rule, is that we still don't need a leg, because we explained before, the Torah has to put it back in. But over here, we have a different rule, hold the history, history. Since the first history fell away, the second history fell away. We're trying to say, why don't we just say, a is just like Eshesach. Just like Eshesach, the Torah says, if he died with no children, you can marry her. So even if it's a Chosish also, it's not a problem, because doesn't make any sense. One is or two is from all the history. You see this concept that Ula introduced. If Amr Ula back in the Gemara, two lines from the bottom of the page. Amr Ula, Ma Tam, what's the reason why you're allowed to about carry over here, even though you asked on me, Biba makes a Shema Bia, all the Saraso, since he's allowed to put his hands in and over and basically over on an Isra Raisa, because Ula holds Shmi, Biba makes a Shema Bia, and you're not allowed to come into the Azara, but a Matsora on his eighth day is allowed to. So since he's allowed to put his hands in on the eighth day, after it's full yom, who to Lakuri of also, he became a Valkyrie in the eighth day, even though he's uh, he's Valkyrie and he's a full yom and he can't go in, uh, he's allowed to go in there also into, into where? Into Harabayas. He's allowed to go, oh, Behutzer, Litzaraso. He's allowed to put in, it's not even the same hetzer because he's allowed to put his hands into the Azara for the Saras. So he's also allowed to put in, he's a Valkyrie also, he's allowed to put his hands in. He's a Valkyrie, he's putting his hands, not only is he on our bias, but he's also putting those same hands, the hands are also coming into the Azara. So that's the concept of whole history. So at this point, we're saying, okay, that's why Eshazah, you know why, why, why do I need Oleha Oleha? Back to our issue of Ekmimus. Why do we need Oleha Oleha to teach me because that you know? Do because I would have thought you're allowed to, just like Eshazah, the Torah permitted, the same way over here, the, the Torah permitted putting your hands into the Azar when you're a Mitzar on the eighth day, put it there. And then since it permitted that, it permitted also the Valkyrie, whole of history, history. So I'd say, same thing in here. Since it's since the Torah uh, uh, relaxed the rule of not marrying your brother's wife in a case where your brother died with no children, so relax the rule also of a Chosisha and say, you're allowed to. That's what I would think. And therefore, I need Allah, Allah. Says the Gemara, no, it's not comparable to Ula. Midomi was not comparable to Ula. Tenach, why? Listen to this. Again, what did I say at the beginning? That in the case of the Mitzorah, what happened? <laughs> he, he, was, he was forbidden to go on Harabayas, right? He was a Mitzorah, right? We're good on Harabayas. And what happened? And the eighth day, eighth day, he's Mutzor to go in there, right? Now, on the eighth day, he wasn't really Tomei, he was just Bechus Kippurim, right? Right. And then, then he was, became Valkyrie, he became Tomei on the eighth day again. So we said, since the first one is Mutzor, the second one's Mutzor. Mace is Reuven. Remember, Reuven died. An example we get, Reuven was married to Leah. He died. Let's say Reuven died first. Let's say Reuven married, there were two brothers, right? Married to two sisters. Who married first? 
if Reuben married first, right, what was Shimon's first Isser to Leah? Aisha Saf, marrying his brother's wife, okay? And then Shimon, the survivor, come survive. The survivor, the brother who survived, he then married her. So what happened? Which Isser came first, Aisha Saf or Chosisha? If Reuben got married first, the Isser of Shimon first was Aisha Saf. Then when he married Rachel, he had a new Isser of Achosisha, of Achosishto. We'll talk about Isser Chalal Isser. That gets into another category later on in Daflam and Lamed Aleph. We'll talk about the Isser of, uh, of, um, of uh, Isser Chalal Isser. But we understand here, if the first Isser was Eishasach, and then the second Isser was Achosisha, because Reuben got married first, and then Shimon, to me, Gudishri Isser Eishasach, since the first Isser fell off by, by the Torah telling you you should do Yibam, so Ishri Nami Yisra Chosisha. So the second Yisra also fell off. The second Yisra was piled onto the first one. And if the first one went away, so we said they all flow away. Let's say Shimon got married first. Two brothers, right? Who married Who married first? Shimon. Shimon married Rachel first. So which Yisra did Shimon have on Leah? Achosisha. And then afterwards, when Reuben got married, then it became an Yisra of Eishasach. If Shimon got married first, was there first, yeah, right? The first. So therefore, maybe not, it's not whole history history. It's not like the case of Ula. In the case of Ula, so what do we say? In the case of says Rashi, the carry Bishmini He was already mut, he was already mutter from the first sister because he was already finished with his seven days. So his first sister was already gone. He wasn't a Mitzora anymore. So when the first sister fell away. I would say, before, before the second Tumah came upon him, the first one fell away. As soon as it was the eighth day in the morning, he was no longer Tame uh, from being a Mitzorah, just had to bring his Karbanos, and then he became a Valkyrie. So, so in that case, the first sister fell away, so you could say the second one came too. But over here, right, uh, but over here, if the, if, the, uh, if, the, if the brother who died, Ella, uh, if Shimon got married first, was there. And even if the Reuben got married first, that's fine. If Reuben got married to Leah, and he married her, and then he, and he died, he died first. And then Shimon, and then Shimon got married to, to, to his wife. The because you could say. During that period, when his when his brother died, before he married her sister, oh, very good. We'll get say it. The he could have, Shimon could have married Leah when his brother died because he wasn't yet married to 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 Rachel. So that so oh, 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 but you're asking very good. Michael's asking very good. How was he allowed to marry Rachel? It's a host kuka. So, so you remember this from seven and a half years ago, and fifteen Maybe years ago, and twenty years ago. No, the answer is oh, so. The answer is that Israel host kuka. So probably he's only an Isra drabonim, not an Isra Raisa. Min Torah, if his brother died, Reuben died, Reuben was married to Leah, died with no children, and Shimon wasn't married, he could marry Rachel, Min Torah. Or you could hold, later on, we're going to talk about Yesh Zika, Zira Zika, the Raisa, or his only drop on, and he could hold Ein Zika. That's a crop. But the point is, it's certainly no Isra the Raisa for him to get up and marry Leah, uh, marry uh, Rachel after his brother died while Leah is still in Amana. Right? While Leah is still in Amana, there's no Isra the Raisa. It's a host because of Isra the So again, uh, even if even if Reuben died first, in other words, it doesn't work if Shimon got married first, because then the Isra of Achos Ishtar was there first, and then there was an Isra of Eishasach, so if it's a Torah's Matra Eishasach, maybe Achos Ishtar still remains. Again, it's a logic. You could say, well, I'm get rid of both of them, you know, get rid of that, but there's a logic there. If we were to compare it to the case of Ula, maybe Ula, this concept that he holds a pole of the Ishtar Ishtar, maybe that only works in the case where the first Ishtar fell away, and then you had the second Ishtar. So since the first Ishtar wasn't there, the second Ishtar was also Mutter. So you could say that in the case where Reuven died, right, where Reuven died, and uh, Reuven got married first and he died, or we first we said Reuven died, and Reuven got married first, and then Shimon got married. So since Reuben's Yisra of Eishasach go, goes away, the Yisra of Eishasach on Shimon, what's the first Yisra of, of, on Shimon? Eishasach, if Reuben got married first, so the Yisra for Shimon on Leah was Eishasach, and if that Yisra fell away, the other Yisra fell away too. But if Shimon got married first, then Yisra Achos Yisra was there first, so Nassim Eish Yisra Achos cut them, and therefore when the Yisra of Eishasach goes away, the, Achos, the Yisra of Achos Yisra, which was there first, still remains. And even if Reuben got married first, right, let's say he died, even if Reuben got married first, if he got married and he died, and then Shimon got married, 
the husband of Anna, because Shimon could have married Leah in between. Ella, Nasser, Mace, Philomas, let's say if Reuben got married first and he didn't die, and then Shimon got married. Oh, very good. Here's my, why don't you marry my sister in law? Reuben got married to Leah. Shimon got married to Rachel. Yakach, Nasser, and then Shimon got married. Lois, he never, he never had an opportunity to, 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 uh, to marry her at all. Milo, Moda, Ula, wouldn't, Moda be, wouldn't Ula be Moda in the case of the Besora? Sheim Ra, Kari, Belel, Shmini. If, if he would have seen the care, seen a, 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 a bit of a carry on the night going into the eighth day, which was before he was told, he was, he was not told yet from the Torah, he can't put his hands in there. He can't, he can't put his hands in there. Why? Because he's still, he's still, he's still, a, he's still a, a, a Valkyrie. He can't, was, even if he's allowed to, even if he's allowed to, from terms of the Torah, put his hands in there, on the eighth day, but he's about carry now. He never had a moment where he could have brought a carbon. If he woke up on the eighth day and he was tar, he had a time that he could have brought a carbon. But if when he woke up on the eighth day, he was already a carry, maybe he wouldn't say whole vishdrishti. Ella, now we're now we're coming to the end. Ella, you know what? Ella, when do I need a lad to tell me you can't marry your wife's, uh, your, your, your brother's wife? She's also your sister, your wife's sister. You can't marry your brother's wife, she's also your wife's sister. That case we said. Let's say Reuben got married to her first. Reuben got married to Leah, and he died. And now Shimon's is supposed to marry his sister-in-law. Died without Shimon. Instead of that, he married Rachel. Now he married he married his wife, his brother's wife's sister, became his wife. In that case, you might say, oh, history, history. You might say, maybe he should get married. Right. Once it's mutter, even though he's married to his wife, even though he's married to Rachel, maybe she marry Leah now, since the survey Shasach is not there anymore. Maybe it's mutter. That's what I would say. And then Shimon got married to her. So Shimon's really, right? Shimon's really what? In this case, uh, and then Shimon married her. So in that case, what would you say? I might think, what? Well, you're allowed to marry her. Right, because he had a time that he could have married Leah. Right, he had a time that he could have married. Leah. And since the Isser of what of Eishes Ach doesn't apply, the Isser Vachos Isha doesn't apply either. Even though he's married to to Rachel, maybe he should marry Leah also, just like Yaakov Avinu married two sisters. Maybe he should also. Reuben got married and he died with no children. And now Shimon could marry Leah, but he got up and he married Rachel. Shimon got married Rachel. Maybe he could marry Leah also. So in that case, I need a Leah to teach me. No, you don't. A Leah, no. Chosisha, even a Leah, teaches me. Even if it's a case of Yibam, you don't marry her. That's what it's worth. Mori by Seima. I'll see vacation with Yona. They can learn a hex from Yona. What's a Rav Yona? Vitem Ravuna by the Rishuam. Because the Pasuk is Kuchashi Asim Kotav Asaila. All the Arayas mentioned over here, all the incestual things. Menichrasu. If you marry Anna, you're going to get Karis. Hukshu Karis Kum Leishasach. They're all like Eishasach. My Eishasach Shari. Just like Eishazach is mutter, I've called Arayas not Mishra and Kasser Rachman Aleah. You know what I need to laugh? Because I'm thinking I'll have a heckish. All the Arayas are all the same. They're chayv cars, and the Torah says one of them is mutter. So if one of them is mutter, maybe all of them is mutter. A hekish, a mashiv, and Allah hekish is Rashi. I, you might say here, there's two isurim, like we said before, and I'm at base. Remember before we said, how can you compare? There, there's one is that's if it's a simple comparison, yes. But if you're learning it from a hekish, a mashiv, and Allah hekish. So even though you know, Sam Torah says, Rabbi Yonah says like. All the all the uh, all the Arabs are all wukish to one another. Call she asked me, call it all these you get cars for. They're all comparable. And one of them is Aishasach. So if Aishasach is mutter, the other one's Vesar too, Achosisha and Kalasso and all the other ones are also mutter. I you'll tell me those are two isurim, because you're because in the case of Aishasach, who's also a Chosisha, in the case of Shimon marrying Leah, it's a Chosishto and Aishasach. We don't care. Ain't Meshiv and Allah Hekesh. That's why we think that it's mutter. Kamashman Allah Leah, they you know. So we come now to the Maskona. Two reasons, either because of all the history, history in the case of so you might think that you could marry your wife's sister and the male will learn out all the other ones from that, or because of Hekish. Now the Gemara is going to continue on tomorrow discussing this. Why, why do we still need it? We're still, we have the answer at least already. We know why we need a Leah because you might think either because of a Hekish or because of the whole history, history that it would be mutter to marry your the sister in law, even though. It's more than just Eish Yisach, it's also Achos I think mm-hmm. you're allowed to anyway. You're allowed to be like Yaakov Avina. You're allowed to do it. Kamash Malan, that you can't because of Alei Alei. And we'll continue this tomorrow, Mr. Mm-hmm. Mickey, are you, uh, are you here? Or are, are you in Israel or are you in LA? Walked away. Okay. Have a good day.